So this is uh, scripting attacks, um, cross-site scripting and server-side scripting. Um, we are the Cyber Eagles, and we uh, sort of to, uh, to defend Ombre and Serato. I'm Jeff. Connor Payne. Connor Wilson. Jacob Bradley. And Christopher Haggerty. So um, in, uh, for introduction, um, we've given this assignment and project our team uh, first um, with learning about cross-site scripting and other uh, scripting um, attacks in class. We wanted to broaden our knowledge of the subject before we actually implemented and went through with our attack. Um, we started off by uh, doing a lot of outside research so uh, we could be a little bit more comfortable um, with what we did. And once we, uh, we uh, came a little bit more comfortable as a group, um, we pre uh, prepped for our attack um, using the um, Linux virtual machine that Dr. O provided and uh, her thorough instructions. Um, we began to uh, uh, attack um, our test site that was provided. Um, and then after running through the attack multiple times, we had began to see why this uh, type of attack was so common and all that was gained from using this attack method. And in our um, following uh, slides, we go into a little bit more depth on uh, background knowledge on the subject, literature reviews for cross grade sifting uh, and uh, Apache 2, our method, uh, method and network topology, the uh, live demonstration, um, the results we got from it, and uh, our recommendations for uh, mitigating the risk of uh, server-side and cross grade scripting. A little bit of background knowledge of what we were working with. Uh, we're using Apache 2, one of the most widely uh, used uh, web server softwares on, out there. Uh, it's an open source, very common that everyone uses it. And with uh, Apache, uh, it is modeled on Unix, which is uh, we are accessing through a virtual machine connection. And with the virtual machine, we are using a set of uh, specification configuration files that are backed by the physical resources of a host. And when we use Apache 2, if it's not configured properly, we won't be able to access the sites that we need to access when we are using our test site or in the rest of the sites on our project throughout this presentation. All right, so for the literature review on Apache, I found a nice bar graph that gives you all of the vulnerabilities of the Microsoft web server along with Apache and comparing the two. And so with our hack, it was configuration error. Uh, and as you can see, the configuration errors for Apache are much higher than the Microsoft server, and that's due to the complicated process of setting up the actual Apache server. Uh, the main cause of this is developers are typically much more focused on the business aspects and then on the security. Uh, so for the literature review of the cross-scripting, I found that web application attacks are much more commonly used on applications that include user input, and they're also categorized into two Reflective, reflected attacks and stored attacks. And reflected attacks are typically with emails and links, and stored attacks are stored on the actual servers um, themselves. And then also have a nice diagram that gives you an example of a stored attack. Uh, this is a hacker injects the malicious soft the script, steals the cookie, and then it's on the user's computer. Which brother are you? Hey, I'm Connor Wilson. Uh, this is a ba very basic. Uh, network diagram for how we went about our methods. Uh, we've got two VMs, the Windows VM and the Linux machine, uh, both of them accessible by the remote app at FSU. Uh, we can connect on our personal machines. They're connected to two networks, one internal VM network that lets them interconnect and one that lets it out to the internet. Our Linux machine has no GUI, so we use our Windows machine to access our actual web pages. And we'll do a hands-on demonstration here. So here we are on our in our XSS folder with set get cookie .htm. We will input our username, Eagle. Set the cookie, show the cookie, verify that it's there. Submit the username, hello Eagle. We'll forward on over to malurl .htm. Now here are our second link. While it shows that it's a very safe link, it's not. It will end up redirecting us to this stealcookie.php, which has our username in it, and it will use that against us. And, no less, on our Linux machines, it has it stored, mm -hmm. as you can see by all of the various usernames we've had so far. So onto our script attacks folder. As you've probably seen, we'll go roses.htm, and it shows us a page about roses. 
So now, if we add bash commands, you can now see that there's more files. Continue a little forward, we'll go into the confidential folder, and it shows us bankinfo.htm. And then finally, you can use cat, you can use more, but you will be cat into the confidential folder and the specific bankinfo.htm file. And sure enough, $100,000, now somebody knows you have it. Results of the uh, attack were successful. We were able to complete the attack that we wanted to complete. Some of the things that could help defend against this type of attack would be uh, Google Chrome uses sandboxing, and Firefox uses a, a plugin called NoScript. Uh, for Google Chrome, uh, the multi-process architecture allows for a lot of flexibility the way in the browser handles security. Uh, the entire HTML rendering and JavaScript execution is isolated to its own class of processes. Uh, the sandbox uses security features of Windows extensively. That way it doesn't recreate the wheel. It uses access uh, identity tokens uh, tied to the processes, similar to a role-based architecture, role-based uh, RBAC architecture. And uh, this can help illuminate uh, the search bar technique that was utilized in the uh, early part of the video. It can help uh, not allow those type of cross-site uh, cross scripting attacks. And like Chris said, the biggest part about Fixing this, like the quick fixes, is to get rid of that search bar technique. You just have to drop down. Um, however, another idea we found was HTTP only flags, which keeps those type of script attacks server side, so they don't capture any cookies, like we saw the Cyber Eagle being captured. It keeps on the server side so that it doesn't capture any of the client cookies and keeps the clients safe, which is actually a very big problem for um, a lot of the hacks that are going on today with like Equifax. Um, now, those all, all those. Uh, uh, recommendations and such are a little bit more uh, complex and uh, some people uh, might not understand the, the grasp of like implementing that, but some of the simplest things uh, that we could recommend for anybody, a uh, webmaster or whoever is uh, owning or working on your uh, your site is understanding that uh, cross site scripting, we, we know and understand that it is affected by a user's input onto your site. So setting up like a, a, det a detection system that uh, will look for like malicious uh, like script tags and HTML commands, JavaScript commands, uh, and, uh, stuff like that um, is been shown to be the easiest and most effective way to like stop um, the cross price scripting attacks. And also, um, like April had mentioned, um, some of the, the, the most simple and easiest like security 101 is just updating software and uh, updating a, uh, your web server or Apache server or whatever your uh, website really relies on to function um, is one of the most simple and easiest ways to like help protect against uh, any server vulnerability or cross-site scripting attack.